hey guys welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be doing my <laughs> october um what i read my picking my november read and also my november what i read i have my ipad out in front of me with goodreads open so that i can see like my goodreads and like what i've read i don't know whether i mentioned this in my september what i read like this book on the 1st of october i finished gallants by b.e schwab i probably mentioned it in my previous video but i filmed that months back so i have no clue i rated it four stars i feel like i reviewed it in my previous one. Oh well then i read the body farm by patricia cornwell i'd started it months back i feel like i'm repeating myself so there probably is footage out there of me like rating these but oh well anyway I rated this four stars. I loved the actual whole like premise of it, like the murder and also the whole actual body farm and like what it is. That's quite like cool to like read about because it's a real thing. I just, I think what loses its star for me is sometimes it can get at moments a little bit too much into the personal lives of the like characters. But also, at the, so with her niece Lucy, I didn't really mind that stuff too much because it did end up being like fairly relevant not exactly to the case but to the like organization that they are like working for um whatnot so that bit I didn't mind but sometimes it got a bit too much like other personal lives and it was just like mm, could have been cut out but Patricia Cornwell does write good but I listened to The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn, which is Bridgerton book two. Rated this five stars. Absolutely love the narrator and how she narrates stuff. Absolutely love it. Would highly recommend. I read the first book by like actual reading. Um, then second book. Audiobook, as I've just said. And then I had started the third book by audiobook, but I've not like finished it. Then I read, Jesus Christ, where have I missed other? Oh, then I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zebin. I rated this four stars partly because it was both a five star read and a 3.5 at the exact same time, which I know sounds like weird to say, but it was like, it was both like, what's the point of this? But also, I absolutely loved it um which is why i went for four stars um but it's like a really good four stars and i do find myself thinking about it every now and again so it could be that if i was to reread this it would go up to a five i think part of the other thing that made it drop down to a four is the fact that i was one of those who didn't fully understand the whole pioneers scene until like towards like the middle end ish yeah towards the end um which is why it kind of dropped down because it was like i knew it would be relevant but it took a while for me to see how it was relevant like my mind probably picked up the relevance but anyway that was the four stars then i read the mother load by katie cox now this i rated four stars this is about this was a li literary fiction i believe um and it was about a woman who has an autistic child and just like dealing with like motherhood and c having a career and just in some ways the cost of living um and it was really interesting to read um i think with this particular literary fiction i don't think it was one for me it just wasn't my kind of vibe of what i like to read but it was still enjoyable to listen to. Then I read Here Goes Nothing by Eamon McGrath. I rated this two stars. This was so like, there was no like point to it. It was almost as if it was like a diary entry. Now I listened to this on audiobook, like via my library. Um, It was only like three hours and it was just, i was having to push through these like three hours i was like hoping it would get better and it was literally just like a boy band thing um but like not like a young boy band thing i don't know yeah it was honestly pointless then i read changes by judith arnold 
so I seem to rem so going back, I seem to remember that tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow was a definite October, like read and then there's a few others where like later on where they were in the like what I'd picked out for my October TBR. So Changes by Jud Judith Arnold, I rated three stars. It was a romance, but it was also kind of like a what was the point? It was cringe, but not in like a good cringe way. Um, and it was just, it was very much of an insta love, like literally from moment of meeting with her being engaged and looking at wedding venues to a week later, her moving in with this new guy. Like it was just, yeah, no, not for me. Then I listened to The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. I rated this three stars. Towards the end, it, well, I think it, overall it was probably more like a 3.5. Good half of it was really pointless. It was kind of like, where is this, like the psychological thread of? Towards the end, it did get more interesting, but it wasn't enough to go for a four stars. Um, then I read Golden Tiger by Liz Harris. So I got this as an arc and so i rated this four stars it's probably more like a 3.5 um it got better right at the end where it was actually like made me tense which i think is why i'd got made it go up to like a four stars um but overall mm, yeah i just i think that was me trying to get into like a different genre and i don't think that was for me like i don't think historical fiction was for me then I read Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This is clearly, oh no, this is, this is a five star read for me. I was about to say this is the first five star read, but actually it's not because the Viscount Who Loved Me was my first five star of this, of October. But I absolutely loved this and I, I'm sorry, but Payden and Kai, I freaking love this. I Honestly, it kills me that I'm going to have to wait till July for, I think it's Reckless, which is book two. Why? I will be buying that the moment it comes out. Like, hopefully the works have it so that I can get it, like, cheaper. But if not, I will just be getting it from, like, Waterstones or something. But I freaking loved this book so much. In some ways, I kind of want it to be made into a movie. However, to be fair, I know that it is a lot. A lot of it is based off of like Hunger Games. Now I haven't read Hunger Games. I was never interested in Hunger Games to be fair. It could just be at the age I was at where I was quite young when Hunger Games came out so it just hasn't been something that I've been interested in. And to be fair I started to get back into fantasy like as of this year. To be fair I got back into reading properly this year um, but I absolutely love Powerless. Maybe I'll do a reread of it next year, but I've literally got like a hundred books. Um, so maybe it will have to wait. Then I read Balanced on the Blade's Edge by Lindsay Boroka. I seem to remember having read 13 books in October. I believe it's 13. But anyway, Balanced on the Blade's Edge, I rated three stars. Overall, this was even more pointless. Um, there was a lot of like chemistry between main female character and what I would consider the main male character but it was very much a it's very much probably more of a like a lust like what is it that they are enjoying about each other so much it's almost as if because their love is like forbidden that's all that attracts them um and like she's just good looking he's good looking then I read Yellow Face by R.F. Quang actually no I listened to the audiobook of it I rated it three stars. This, so absolutely, it was a good read, but the messages weren't exactly getting across. Like I understood the themes, the topics, and it was really interesting to read from that point of view, but it was almost like a, well, what's the point of this video? Like, what's the point of this book? Now, especially with how it ended, um, now I know that this has, was like top of, um, the Goodreads 2023 thing in its category. Um, and I can definitely understand why, 
it's just not for me to be honest um then i read the killing habit where have i got it here by T by mark billingham i rated this three stars this like the book has to be really impressive for it to be a five stars in terms of like thrillers usually books are like four stars this just fell flat it felt too slow even at the points of like high stakes and it was like it didn't give me that like tense feeling um which is why it was a uh, three stars i do remember enjoying his previous book of his that i've read so i don't necessarily think it's him i think it's more it's just this book wasn't one for me um but i did enjoy it and the fact that this version had like big text was just ideal to be fair so today i'm going to be picking up my november like tbr so i'm not gonna beat around the bush i did this last month and so how i did it was i had a book club pick i had i think i had a book that i just i wanted to how many did i pick out last month because i know i have my okay so i had my book club pick last month then i had an unofficial one where it was from someone else's book club and because they were reading it at the same time I picked it up like I read it at the same time just because I had it um and then I picked three others from my TBR jar so what I'm gonna do so for the book club pick even though she's technically not announced it because of how many votes there are I know which book is the November um book like book club read which is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Honestly, I've seen, like, like, Rachel has talked about this series so much. Like, she absolutely loved the second one. Um, and so I was really excited to get into the series. And I knew I wanted to get into it at some point, And I knew I wanted to buy the book. And honestly, this just gave me a really good excuse to buy the book um so yeah i'm really happy i got this i was stood in um waterstones for the longest time trying to find it and i think what happened was there was a different book on top of the like the part of these books and i think because the book was different to um like the books around it I didn't realize um or either that or I just didn't see it but yeah that's the first read and I'm so so excited um another one it's kind of it's both November and end of October so, but I'm going to include it it's a book called Fire Facts I can't remember who it's by um but I've got the ARC um ebook for it so which I need to read by like the 3rd of November so I'm going to mention it but also it's not in my like official like list but I thought I'd mention it anyway so obviously snapchat has its whole AI system now I've never I'd never had any reason to use that I'd see however I've seen Sarah um she used it to pick out her reads so I thought you know what it would be fun to get it to pick out my next like read it took me like six goes for it to give me a book where I actually owned it because that was my intention. I didn't want to have to go out and buy another book. Um, but yeah, anyway, so after a long while, it recommended Red, White and Royal Blue by, K by Casey McQuiston. Um, yeah, I really love this. I feel like I need to explain this book. So it's about... Um, a woman who has always believed in happily ever after uh, until she learns that someone she loves is getting married and, and it devastates her and she wants to stop the wedding and heal her broken heart and strikes a deal with a person called the Prince of Hearts um, who bargains her help, like his help with three kisses that he can have at any point that he chooses um and basically it's just she realizes this isn't like the safest game to play anyway this is a um 
that's like a fantasy i believe it's titled this will be a this is a romance and it's about a um the son of the president of the united states and the um son like the prince of england they have to kind of put up a freak like a fake friendship to kind of unite the two like countries um and so they have to build this fake um friendship and it develops from there so then on to the tbr jar i will still be picking out three it might not look like there's much but there is like about 100 books in here so yeah last month we got two ebooks and a physical book um out of this so yeah there's one i'm making sh i'm making sure it's just one um that's the one i'm doing so that's two three and even though i can't see what it says i feel like i have glimpsed some like red um so for anyone who's not watched the last one in that jar the one i've got i've written out the books rather than like prompts um just to make it easier for me um and i've got a mixture of physical books that are on my tbr cart right here and also ebooks so the ones that are in red are ebooks the ones that are in black ink are physical books so oh no i was wrong i didn't glimpse red I can just see the E of something, but we do have an ebook. I've just put coming up roses. I need to look at it properly and to tell you the full title of the book just because I've abbreviated titles. Oh, I'm going to leave the physical book to last. I've just spotted red. Then I've got a book called Girl from Paradise Hill. Um, oh. And then we have Rattle. I think I know exactly which book that is. I'll go pick it up and I'll find out the um, full titles of the ebooks whilst I'm at it. Okay, so I've just got out the books and I've just looked at the ebooks. So I'll start with the ebooks. Uh, the first ebook was Coming Up Roses by Stacey Hart. It's a rom com. It doesn't give me a um, like description just because I think it's no longer on like the description is no longer in like the apple books like store um but it's a rom-com um which will be fun and then the other one is the girl from paradise hill by susan lund and it's a crime and thriller it's just a woman goes home to bury her father and discovers stuff in the attic that makes her question what she knew about him like there's a cold case and I don't want to give more because I can't be asked to read this full thing but that's kind of what it's about and I think it's just discovering the truth. Rattle is by Fiona Cummins. It's a fact that I as I was walking up to get it I was like I immediately knew which author it was um but he leads an ordinary life some of the time he has a past which explains his behavior most of the time he has a hobby too terrible to understand all of the time Essa is a detective who suspects him Erdman and Lilith are parents who fear him and Jakey and Clara have something he craves the collector has come to rattle their bones and he won't stop until he's caught in this deadly game only one thing is certain finders keepers losers grievers so turns out that i'd actually tried to start this i'd read like 74 pages clearly i wasn't vibing with it at the time and also this would have been like back in like 2021 so i've had this book for a while when was this book published out of cur curiosity 2017 so again i seem to have got quite a good selection i have a the crime thriller another crime thriller two romances and like a fantasy five books means that it's not too much yeah it's just i haven't set myself too big of a goal 
um, especially because I start placement this month and so that uh, for the last half of the month I'm not going to be as able to read. So now that you've seen what I've picked out for my November TBR, let's get on to what I actually read in the month of November. First book I read was Fire Facts by A.M. Bergara. This was an arc that I got, um, I rated it two stars. Um, I think, I think this was supposed to be a historical fiction. I think it was also marketed slightly as a thriller and the bits where it's supposed to thrill just fell flat and it just, it didn't feel high stakes. It was just as though I was like a reading along in someone's life, but I wasn't like scared for them at all. And it was just, then the next book I read was The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic by Brianne Randall. I read this on, um, by, by my library. I rated it three stars. It was cozy. It was sort of cozy and like it had some of the magical effects. Sorry about any background noise. I hear shouting in the background, but it just fell a bit flat. Like the magical little bits. Yes, did it feel a bit magical? Yes. But overall, I don't know. It just, it didn't captivate me. I didn't feel like warmth and like cozy, but it still had cozy vibes. I don't know how to um, describe it. Um, I will say though, it was definitely an interesting take to have like recipes after each chapter of one of the things mentioned and I do think that's a fun thing and yeah I definitely think that's a fun thing um but it just it just clearly didn't end up being the book for me um then I listened to Thornhedge by T Kingfisher which I rated three stars now this was a kind of alternative of like Sleeping Beauty and I will say the whole premise of it was definitely interesting like ha like hands up to um T Kingfisher like that is definitely creative it was just again I think it just fell flat I don't know whether it was the like actual narrator and their voice and they just didn't quite hook me in um but I think this one was more of a I was trying to find a shorter like audiobook to listen to to break up me trying to listen to a longer one and then I read The Coca Conspiracy which is an archaeological thriller now by Caleb so it was by Caleb Andrew I rated this four stars so I have read can I grab one of his books mm, there's books on top of it so I re I have read um books by Clive Kessler which are kind of like archaeological type ones well let's do with like art old artifacts usually like in the sea like deep down and all of that um and this was to do with kind of temple um that was kind of in the middle of a jungle rated four stars but also at the same time if the high stakes bit felt a tiny bit too flat also I definitely think it takes a bit of time to get into and that does definitely knock it down and then the final book that I read in the month of November was Red, White and Royal Blue, which I rated a 4.75 according to my little comment on Goodreads. However, my overall rating on Goodreads was a five star. I loved this book so much. The thing that knocked it down that 0.25 was, although I knew that the end, like the second half of it needed to happen, like we needed to see how they were going to work long term at the same time some of it felt a bit too it felt a bit too drawn out a little bit but i still loved it and i definitely think that this should be like a romance sort of between like june and like not necessarily pairs but i may could have seen june and nora all automatically just like have something go on between them i don't know why but i expected for nora at the very least to find like someone and for there to be like a girlfriend of hers but then again to be fair she's not one to be like tied down so those are all the books that I read in November obviously I didn't read something up roses and I can't remember the other one literally I it's been oh yeah and then the other one in November that I'd obviously planned to read was Once Upon a Broken Heart which I didn't finish I think I started it like the final like day of November but luckily, because the person who's done the book club is like on holiday at the moment, um, it just means that I can draw it over into being like a and December read. Um, so yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what books you read in the, both of those months or what books you plan to read in December. 
and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!